others that happened over the years. In December 2015, Zesta September was strangled to death by her boyfriend, Charid. And or well, rather, her child remains are found were near a Linasia military base on New Year's Eve. And in October 2014, Mary Lee Makum uh, was uh, butchered to death by her ex-boyfriend, and Makum's body was rolled up in a carpet and stuffed in a boot of her vehicle. Very difficult indeed to take a story like this of a young girl that's lost her life and you can see the desperate uh, and uh, somber feeling of her father as well. So we discuss this further then. We're joined here live in studio by Palisam Papa, who's logo and advocacy manager at Power. Uh, we've got Debbie Howes as well, from who's a clinical psychologist. We also have Anthony Townsend, um, who's a clinical psychologist as well. Thank you very much uh, for joining us, uh, lady and gent. Um, this kind of behavior, this kind of uh, crime is seemingly becoming very, I, I don't know if it's because it's being reported a bit more that we know about it a little bit more, mm -hmm. Anthony, uh, but what, 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 what pushes people uh, to act out in such rage? Well, I think to begin with, it is a case that we have greater visibility around the issue, but we are also seeing increased incidents. Uh, yeah. According to stats, I'd say it's 4.9% more common that we're experiencing Jeez. violence than it was in the last financial year. What seems to be causing it is, is obviously a manifest of a lot of different causes, but one of the principal ones is, of course, the way we're psychologically constructing masculinity in the country at this point. We find that our masculine identities are very limited in the sense that men are not traditionally allowed to experience compromise, severe distress, sadness, anxiety. All of those things start to get channeled into the one socially acceptable emotion that men are, are encouraged to display, which is around anger and aggression. And so by virtue of that fact, all these sorts of distresses get channeled into aggression, which of course is then socially reinforced, and any man who doesn't subscribe to that sort of hegemony gets gets called, kind of castigated or told yeah. that they're not good enough. And by virtue of that fact, we're reinforcing a sense that it's appropriate for men to engage in violent behavior and, and really not allowing them to develop alternative strategies of dealing with problems or dealing with other people. The, the, the psychological analysis is very little comfort for families and the Mukwenas in particular who have lost uh, such a beautiful young lady who had a, a promising future. Um, and, and, and thinking of the fact that the perpetrator even if he's is given the stiffest uh, jail term, still has the gift of life. Mm. And they can't enjoy that. So, Sherilyn uh, Shabango from Pink Ladies Organization, just a word of comfort in, in this horrific act that you, no parent would ever want to imagine happening. What, what, what do we say to the parents? I would like to say, especially to the parents, uh, we are faced with a sketch. Nowadays, we're in, we've got a lot of teenagers that are missing. And that is why we are always advising to say, if your child is missing or your child goes for an interview or goes with friends, be on the loop and know where they are and who they are with and what they are doing with that person. Because at the end of the day, I mean, she was missing for almost like two weeks. What was happening in the interim? Who knows if she was already dead at that time, that she was like missing. And in most cases, you find that parents don't even know where their kids are mm -hmm. and where they hang out. With which these are the things that we are supposed to be worrisome of. Yeah, but but contact crimes in itself is, is not necessarily just a random act of violence. It's often people that are very intimate mm -hmm. and close to the person. As now we know, in Karabo's case, was her boyfriend. So even as a parent, I mean, they, you simply don't have the ability to protect your children as much as you would want to. There, there, there is a, a time and, and space where some perils, you know, will, 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 will fall on them. Mm, absolutely, and, and we do understand that, statistically speaking, most violent crimes are committed by people who are closely related to the victim. And it, it speaks a lot to the fact of how limited we seem to be in terms of dealing with problems outside of using violent force and, and the fact that we're not communicating in ways that allow us to be more constructive in the way that we deal with these sorts of issues. Mm. When it comes to influences, uh, Cheryl, um, would you say that society plays a, a massive role in creating uh, this uh, masculinity that a male and female, why one is superior over the other, but most importantly, um, it, it is a game of who, who, who has the upper hand. And, 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 and can we teach our kids, can we teach our young women uh, that they, how to behave, how to change that mindset um, from a very early age on? 
I think for a long time, we've been focusing mostly on a girl child, with which in the past year, and even beginning of this year, we have come in contact with quite a lot of very influential men, and we have requested that it's high time we taught a boy child what it means to respect a woman. Because currently as we stand, we are living in societies that are broken. And in our societies being broken in the interim, you find that most of the boys and girls are growing up with single parents, with which even if they grow with both parents, most of these um, boys who end up being abusive are growing up watching the abuse happening at home. Yeah. So in most cases, the fathers are not there and they even learn sometimes from their friends' parents that, well, a man can beat a woman. And currently, men can even abuse women in public and nobody will condemn it. Mm. So at the end of the day, when kids are watching that, remember kids don't learn through reading books. They learn from seeing things happening. And with that, they believe that, well, when I beat a woman, it means it's right. She was wrong. Yeah. So she needs to be beaten up. So the, the, we need to start addressing issues wherein our communities start working together to fight some of the social ills that are there in the communities. Mm. Are we also joined by Debbie House, a clinical psychologist. Good evening to you, Debbie, and thanks for your time. I mean, this is a question uh, that always comes up in the sense that what is society or what does this tell us about uh, the, 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 the nature of the environment where kids are either brought up or, and also, uh, have, we be, have we become desensitized to this uh, clearly dangerous trend of femicide in South Africa? Yes, thanks. Um, it is an indication that uh, anger has become out of control and people are reacting in, in um, inappropriate ways in expressing the anger. And especially when it is so hostile and violent, it is a function of a lot of the unconscious imprinting, as the previous uh, speaker mentioned. Uh, we are a lot imprinted as a child by what we witness. And um, we, uh, children are witness to a lot of inappropriate acts of violence and inappropriate ways of expressing anger via their parental role models, also via a lot of um, games and video games which are very violent where they're always expressing the anger in a hostile way. So that has led to a lot of the norm now where violence has actually become acceptable. And, um, and now it has ex been perpetrated a lot to the women which are victims now and scapegoats for a lot of the anger that builds up and unfortunately now has led to this destructive way of expressing the anger. Mm. Yeah, what is quite interesting as well, we are joined by Palesa Mpapa of Power. Uh, Palesa, good evening and welcome to the show. Um, just a quick one to you, Palesa. Um, you know, when you look at the country at the moment and you look at uh, some of the violent activity that we're experiencing in terms of the protests um, and you think about the influence from the communities of which are in actual fact active in this particular way, uh, do we have a, a future for women who will become more independent and uh, who will actually be able to look after themselves? And not only that, uh, will we be able to have future men, young men and women, who will understand that violence is not a way to resolve matters. Um, with the kind of context that we have, that's a bit of a tricky question, especially because um, what we are seeing is a very high statistics of violence, angry men, and very angry. And the sad thing is that they show anger to people that uh, they would have promised love to, which is very sad. And currently it's showing very sad traits of people who call their partners with petrol, who bend them. It's really scary and we don't know really where we are going, especially with the current um, response that we see from the criminal justice system, where we are not seeing very progressive uh, sentences or sanctions levels against the perpetrators, as the law is expected to actually deter potential perpetrators, to actually um, teach the potential perpetrators a lesson that if they they abuse women, this is what is there for them. So it's very scary. We, we're really heading in a wrong direction. That's all I can say yeah. currently. Valesa, well, please stay on the line. We'll have Dr. Townsend and Sherilyn Shabango in studio. The whole thing of trying to 
um, explain the attributes and what may or may not have happened as a society where we, we ought to be outraged and march and do whatever is necessary, the, uh, hold the justice or judicial system to account, to, 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 to set an example uh, and protect young people, especially young girls. Do, do you find that you know, we, we, we don't even know how to respond to, to these kind of cases? We talk about it now and move on the next week. Absolutely, and, and what a lot of studies are showing us is that the more exposure we have both as individuals and as a society towards violence, the more desensitized we become. The more we find it acceptable or palatable for even minor forms of violence because we're so used to extreme forms. And by virtue of that fact, we can become more bystanders. And also as a result of that, because it can feel so overwhelming, we start to become less capable of feeling like we can make an intervention when in fact really the appropriate response is to be outraged and to band together to be able to help each other. In this. Mm. Yeah, because my, my, my worry is that, you know, with the clinical assessments and what have you, um, a 27-year-old suspect is, has been arrested, he confessed. He's known to have been a forex exchange uh, a trader. So this is not somebody who uh, one could argue may have suffered trauma at the young mm -hmm. as a young person. We don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. But being possessive and, and, and being a narcissist, being, you know, objectifying women mm -hmm. is, is something that we should really be outraged about and, and see the signs early uh, and, and uh, have the remedial action. You, you think we, we focus too much on trying to explain away what may not or, or may uh, have happened with a perpetrator? Definitely. And again, it all comes back to the teachings that we are instilling in the society. Because I normally listen to some of the programs where they are trying to, to speak to the issue that you find young boys sitting by the corner and the comments that they make towards women and in the interim of it all, a woman is not even supposed to answer to it because it's either they are so scared that if I answer, I may be violated. I, so at the end of the day, they just keep quiet. But it continues and continues to such an extent that remember, what you verbalize ends up manifesting physically. So at the end of the day, they are so used to even talking about these things whenever they are sitting there in the street corners and all these things end up manifesting. Mm. Um, you know, Davi, if I may ask you, um, from a clinical psychological perspective, um, how do we start then to reverse uh, this behavior? How do we start um, not to teach, but reverse natural facts, try and, and instill a new type of, uh, and a new set of rules to these young men and women, um, particularly men, uh, you know, and, and, and how, do we, how do we remove if there was actually trauma that they might have suffered early on in their, in their, in, 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 in their lives? Um, is there a clinical uh, psychological remedy uh, to remove this kind of behavior from society? Um, yes, I do work with that therapeutically. When I do work with desensitizing and reprocessing these behaviors, um, we need to work with it on an unconscious level because that's where 80% of the behavior stems from. And in the process, it's not re really removing the behavior, it's teaching the individual how to transmute the anger from the child aspect of them. Because when a person is reacting explosively and inappropriately, it means they're operating from the wounded child within them. So what we do is we teach the individual how to bridge the anger from the wounded child who's reacting. Because from the child's perspective, they will react to others in a way that they've been tr uh, treated themselves. So instead of being able to stand up to the perpetrators themselves, they will be um, projecting their anger onto others in a similar fashion. So what we do with individuals is we teach them how to bridge to the adult male state of being, which means they're able to confront problems a lot more elegantly, where they have time to think about it, and where they can't they express and they are able to give consequences in a more um, assertive way where they can have impact to the appropriate person. Mm. Otherwise, if they don't have impact with the perpetrator to themselves, they will um, project the anger to the innocent and to the victims. A lot of men as well aren't, uh, don't have an outlet to actually express themselves and heal their own emotional build-ups. So they do become reactive in a way. So part of the program is also offering 
the ability to teach people, especially men, emotionally, how to transmute the anger from the child aspect of them to the adult male. All right, Debbie, just hold the thought. I beg your pardon. We have Junior calling us from Soshangove. Good evening to you, Junior. Uh, good evening, and how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yes, you know, this is a very serious challenge that we are facing uh, in our country as far as this uh, manifestation of violence. Whether it is in our protest, we actually ban things, and uh, 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 it, it, it creates lots of problems in our country. In this instance, when you look at the level of education of the alleged, I mean, perpetrator, it doesn't actually tally or resonate with the situation where we find, we find that someone grew up in a tension feeling, tension filled kind of like environment, and that particular person has, has a way of being prone to violence. And I think that it, 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 this is a pure case of particularly, I mean, jealousy. And the fact that uh, sometimes as men we are not well, I mean, uh, trained, uh, for lack of better way, to, to engage with women who are sophisticated, who are intelligent, who challenge us. And uh, if ever we don't actually educate young boys at a very young age to engage with women as partners in a social arrangement, then we are going to have this kind of intimate kind of like uh, killings and everything. And in this instance, police have a lesser kind of like a, 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 a role to play here because of these are intimate uh, 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 partners. But the truth of the matter is that we need to teach our young boys at a very young age that women are not objects. They need to be taught that women are also human beings. Junior, thing... much, much appreciated. Thank you so much. And again, I, I say it's, it, it, I'm sure it's a very little... Um, a consolation to the families, you know, the aftermath thereof, and, and our hearts go out to you, and our prayers uh, will keep you in, in, our, in our thoughts. Indeed, and uh, we're also joined by TC, who's just given us a call. TC, good evening to you, and welcome. Hi, TC. Tiffy. Yes, sir. We're listening. Hello. Yes, yes we're we listening, sir. Okay. I just want to, uh, good, good afternoon to you all. Uh, I, I just want to say to you all, is it turn down your, your uh, TV set that's giving us feedback? All right, I think we're going to have to come back to him. I mean, yeah. let's talk about the signs. And, and again, you know, being a, a mother myself and um, just looking at the images of Karabo, it's, it's really haunting, you know, considering what she's gone through, the, the, the brutality of, of the nature of the, the, the murder, going to the extent of burning her body. Um, and... and now we know from uh, speaking to Mr. McGuana that the boyfriend was abusive, mm -hmm. controlling, all of those things. So when the signs, should one just make a decision to walk away from such or what kind of other interventions can you make? We usually find that the best intervention is the intervention made as early as possible. And usually when one starts to see signs of, of a partner suggesting or threatening violence, becoming controlling, becoming extremely possessive or jealous, and very importantly, starting to cut the victim off from treasured supports, where they don't want you spending time with people who care a great deal about you. These are all signs that one should take into account instantly and rather move away from that relationship and create distance rather than ignoring and moving forward. Mm -hmm. Often it's by staying close to one's supports that you're offered an opportunity to keep in the loop and make sure that less violence can occur um, because it's not, it's, it's not invisible to everyone. It's very interesting, Anthony. And I, I want to see also when we come back, uh, just after taking Ben on the phone, if, if we can have a look at the influence of uh, substance abuse mm -hmm. and, and alcohol and how much that contributes. South Africa stands as one of the top five uh, countries that consumes a lot of alcohol and I want to have a look at that particular perspective but we've got Ben on the line Ben good evening and welcome to the show it seems like we've lost we've lost Ben um, if, if you can please uh, from a psychological when we look at a pattern of substance abuse, we understand the utilization of a substance, so drinking yeah. excessively or using any other drug, is usually in response to an emotional trigger. When one feels incapable of handling a particular emotion, one might try to dull it or get away from it with substances. However, these substances are problematic in their own right. It's, it's common knowledge, of course, that when we drink alcohol, where we're increasing certain chemicals in the brain, like gamma aminobutyric acid, yeah. which makes us more disinhibited, which means that it actually gives us less control over our behavior. Mm. And by virtue of that fact it's fuel to the fire if you were feeling aggressive in the first place and one then drinks one feels less capable of regulating oneself and that violence escalates far beyond what we might hope or expect if one had more self-control so substances are certainly an area we need to tackle in intervening with this issue 
And of course, uh, this is where we're going to have to leave it. You can continue on uh, social media. The hashtag is RIP, or rest in peace, Garabo. And uh, you're welcome to join us. It's at NN7 TV. Thanks indeed for watching. And our condolences again to the McGuena family and so many others that had suffered uh, at, the, at this demise. And to our guest, Cheryl and Shabango, Pink Ladies Organization, or from there, and Anthony Townsend, clinical psychologist. Debbie Howes is also a clinical psychologist. Balesa Mbapa, legal and uh, advocacy manager for people opposing women abuse. We, we're back after this.